Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Dear friends, welcome back. So, so this this is a wing. It's a symmetric wing. We we are discussing in the last lecture, right? Do you want to see how it's going to fly? So, does it fly? Is it going to fly or not? If I throw this as it is, right? So, let us have some marking on this, like. I, as I told you, this is of 0.23 meter span. I mean, the cord is 0.23 meters and a 1 meter span, right? I request Himanshu, my TA, to help me with this. So, sorry, he is my researcher, right? So, this is approximately 0.23 meters. You can see here, this is 0.23 meters or 23 centimeters is the cord of this. So, what will be the aerodynamic center for this configuration? Yeah. So, this is about what it is a rectangular wing. So, the chord remains same lambda is 0 in this case. So, what you have is 2 third of 0.25 yeah. of C. The C bar will be C r and the aerodynamic center will be 0.25 times of this. Yes. So, 23 by 4 is approximately 5.75. So, this particular marking here is 5.75. See, so, this is my marking. What about this side? Can we mark it again? So, this again is 5.75 meters. So, if I draw a line representing the mean aerodynamic chord of this, can we do that? Hmm. Uh, yes. Hmm? Where is that? Can you hold this? You come this side. So, this line which is connecting the aerodynamic center from tip to tip, right. So, this line is going to represent the aerodynamic center of each and every aerofoil and the entire wing, right. Now, let us mark this as A C of wing, right, which is at a distance of 5.75 meters per centimeters from the leading edge of this wing. Okay. This is your aerodynamic center. Now, let us measure the weight is approximately 150 grams, right. And let us throw this as it is, right. Let us see how it's go, what is going to do. See, it just flipped, right? Shall we do it again? See. I'm just throwing it. It is flipping, right? It is continuously flipping. Okay. Let me do a small magic. Uh, or a trick, say. This is a molding clay, which I borrowed it from UAV lab here. Right. So, so I have attached this molding clay to this rod here, which is connecting the wing, right? So. Now, let us see how it is going to fly. 
should i throw it so it's better right so as soon as i uh, add this molding clay to this it started gliding it's not behave it's not flipping the way it behaved in the first case okay let us take another wing okay so this is the cambered aerofoil it's a wing of 1 meter span so both of these have same planform geometry if you can see so so both the models have the same planform geometry but what is the difference between these two wings is a cross sectional profile we have used different aerofoils so the one in my right hand is with a symmetric aerofoil and the one here is with a cambered aerofoil right the one in my left hand you can see it's a cambered aerofoil right now i have already attached some clay here molding clay to this particular configuration and i'm going to throw this and again both of them are with similar chord let me mark down the aerodynamic center of this so so it is again 23 cm chord right it's a rectangular wing so the mean aerodynamic chord chord is again 23 cm so 23 by 4 will be my aerodynamic center which is 5.75 approximately so this is my so aerodynamic center so how about this side I have marked aerodynamic centers on the other side, so let us join these aerodynamic centers. Okay. this line represents your aerodynamic center it's a cambered aerofoil right the wing is with the cambered aerofoil see the glide plays a cru crucial role in this yes so what is the reason it started flying as soon as i attached this clay right what must be the reason so we haven't changed the wing right all we did is shifting the cg that means say with this clay how to measure the cg in the first place cg of this wing either you need to have two balances like this say you place it on one balance here another you ha you have another balance at a offset right you take m1 x1 plus m2 x2 divided by m1 plus m2 that is one way other simpler way here is in our case see so about cg the model will exactly balance right let us say if you take a horizontal rod and if you place this model on that horizontal rod so about cg this model will be balanced exactly right so that location you can consider it as cg location right so in this case about this location the model is exactly balanced right in this case this is the location about which the model is exactly balanced and this location is along the aerodynamic center this way so if i'm shifting the aerodynamic center towards the aerodyn i mean cg of the wing towards the aerodynamic center then it started gliding so say in this case without any clay right so 
So, the C g is somewhere here, right. So, almost close to this point. this is at this particular location. The C g in this case is at this particular location, which is at the aerodynamic center here. That means, for a let us say if I if I make C g 2 ahead of this aerodynamic center, right. What to do that what should I do? I mean if you if I want the C g ahead of this aerodynamic center, I need to add more weight here, right. Yeah, say there is some more molding clay. So, now the C G is at this particular location. Right. which is head of this aerodynamic center. Okay. Okay. So, during the if I fly, if I try to glide uh, I mean throw this uh, wing with this particular CG setting, let us see what happens. See, there is a nose down, right? immediate diving, there is no glide, it started diving down. right? See, with this particular CG setting, this model started diving down, right. Let us I reduce this clay again. I am bringing that CG back, right. What I am trying to do now is bringing close to aerodynamic center here. Now it is behind the AC. So, so, right now I am able to balance this model about the aerodynamic center. So, this is my aerodynamic center, I am able to balance this model. Now, let us see how it is going to behave. It is able to fly. Shall I repeat this? It is a glide, right. Now, let me remove this clay again. So, let us see where is the CG, location of the CG. It has definitely shifted backward, right. So, this is the point about which I can balance this model. So, this is your CG location, this is your CG location right now, which approximately this is your CG location and this is aft this aerodynamic center. Right. If I throw this, so it flipped, it is a somersault, salt right. So, let us me let me do it again. 
I am not trying. I am not trying anything different compared to earlier cases. It is automatically flipping. See, let us see whether it repeats or not. Whatever the angle that I am trying to do, but it will flip. So it can't be too ahead or too behind. What do we infer from this? Right. It should not be too ahead or too behind. That means you need to figure out what are the limits of this CG. And right now we do not have a tail, right. What happens if we add a tail? How far this CG traverse can be allowed? We will discuss this in this lecture. Now, to do this, when the CG is close to this aerodynamic center, in this case for a wing alone configuration, so that too for a cambered aerofoil, right. So, we see a smooth flight, smooth in the sense. So, it was actually the intended path, right, where I was, which I was trying to, or say it should be the intended attitude of the flight. So, it should glide, that is the whole idea why I am throwing. But when the CG is behind, it started flipping. Okay. So, what is the difference in between these two? In the first case, it, it has something called, we call it as a stable flight. In the second case, which is unpredictable, at the same time unstable here. Right. It started flipping. And in the other case where the CG is ahead again, it is diving down. So, we check the, I mean in one of the flights where the CG is near to the aerodynamic center, we witnessed a stable flight, which, which let us say we consider it as a reference. And in other cases, we, we look, I mean we witnessed an unstable or offset flight, flight conditions, right. So, what are the parameters that govern this stable and offset flight conditions? Fine. So, we, def we use something called stable, right? Stable flight. What is stability? Right. So, stability is a property of a system or the nature of the system to come back towards some reference that you consider when disturb when it encounter a small disturbance about that reference. So, this reference in our case or in general is a equilibrium. So, so, now we should talk about when we when we say a stable flight first we need to understand what is stability of a system right. Let us talk about stability. Now, with the help of the concepts of stability let us see how do we design the tail and how do we find the limits of the CG traverse and what should be the size of the tail yeah. and the offset between the tail and the wing. So, all these parameters comes from this stability analysis of the system. Right. So, what is stability? It is a tendency of the system to attain equilibrium once disturbed from it, right. What is this equilibrium again? It is the state of the system about which resultant forces and moments are balanced. So, that means 
the forces and moments are balanced or there are no resultant forces and moments forces and moments are balanced that means sigma f bar is equals to 0 sigma m bar is equals to 0 right so about equilibrium of a system the forces and moments are resultant forces and moments are 0 there are no resultant forces and moments so there are many examples you might have studied in your earlier courses where you consider a simple pendulum right what are the equilibrium points of it that is minus pi by 2 and pi by 2 right at theta is equals to say this is this say this is your zero inclination this is your pi by 2 and this is your minus pi by 2 right at this so there are two equilibrium points of a simple pendulum right about minus pi by 2 and pi by 2 now consider the case where it is at minus pi by 2 right so this is your pivot point o and let m be the mass of the system now you display this mass by an angle theta where l is the length of this this is your theta and you displace this mass to an angle theta here this this will still remain l the length will remain constant here so as soon as you leave it what happens this bob will try to come towards the equilibrium this mass will try to come towards equilibrium and because of its inertia it will start accelerating and yeah till here it will accelerate after that it will decelerate and attain a alternate attain a orientation theta prime where the velocity terminal velocity here is zero right and then it will start coming back right and it will go forth and back right and finally attains a equilibrium if there is enough friction in the hinge as well as there is a friction in the surrounding atmosphere right air friction air friction or a fluid friction say that means once you disturb this particular object it from its equilibrium right it will try to come back towards its equilibrium right so this particular equilibrium is known as stable equilibrium that means the system is finally attaining its equilibrium right so let us consider a case where so there is no air resistance and say this connecting rod has negligible mass and there is no friction so you are doing performing this experiment in a vacuum chamber so what happens is this will keep oscillating we can say the still see the the system still trying to attain the equilibrium but it is not it will not reach the equilibrium because there is no resistance there is no damping to the oscillations right so there is no damping in the system it is trying to oscillate about this equilibrium right so the system the although the system tries to come back towards its equilibrium but you can't say the system is stable in that case why because it is ultimately not coming back to to that equilibrium right after a while it should come back towards that equilibrium right but it has a tendency towards to come back towards but it is not attaining that equilibrium here in this case you, so even in that condition we can't say that the system is stable right that means so when you're talking about stability you're talking about two conditions here one is the tendency to come back towards its equilibrium and finally over a time period you're looking at the behavior of the system and commenting whether the system is coming back towards the equilibrium or not so there are two phases here i mean there are two cases for this stability one is the initial case is static stability right so at any instant you see 
the pendulum is here trying to come back towards its initial equilibrium position. So, that talks about your static at any instant, does it have this tendency or not? That is a static stability. The study about such condition is the static stability. Whereas, if you are looking at the time history of this motion and say how long it is going to take to come back towards its equilibrium, say if it has to come back towards its equilibrium, what should I do? How should I increase the damping? Or what? what should be the time to half these oscillations. So, the study I mean the study related to this time time history of this motion or once disturbed from its equilibrium is a dynamic stability. So, dynamic stability talks about the time history of motion of the system once disturbed from its equilibrium position. Now, consider this see we have another equilibrium point which is at pi by 2. So, assume that the pendulum now is at the other equilibrium point which is pi by 2 right. So, this is similar to this case right where you are holding a stick right. So, at some point yeah this is stable here when you when you make it like uh, when you place it on the table uh, vertically it is stable when you place this pen uh, or the marker vertically on this table right so this is also equilibrium point because if there is a resultant force there will be a motion right but and moments it will try to rotate resultant moment but here the resultant force and moments are zero that's why it is it is at rest right now, but whether this position is stable or not, let right, us say if there is a small disturbance, it, it has attained a new equilibrium, it have not came back to the, its previous equilibrium. Right. Let us say in the other case, if I hold at the top of this marker, say if I give some addition, external force, right, it will start oscillating and coming back towards its equilibrium. So, this particular equilibrium is a stable equilibrium. So, the one at pi by 2 is a unstable equilibrium because it is not coming back to its initial equilibrium once disturbed from it the same thing here. So, so this so you see right now since I am holding it now I can vary the friction here or the frictional force. So, so say if I disturb this it may not go down say if it is a proper hinge it will definitely any small disturbance will definitely take it away from it, but this particular equilibrium which is an unstable equilibrium here right. Now, what is what are the conditions here for which so in this case in, in case of a pendulum C if the C G is beneath the hinge point. So, this is your C G right if your C G is beneath the hinge point it is a stable equilibrium the equilibrium in which the C G is beneath the hinge point is a stable equilibrium. If the C equilibrium in which C G is above the hinge point is a unstable equilibrium right. So, similarly do you have something in the aircraft right, but in this case the C G and the hinge point on in the vertical axis. So, what happened to the aircraft what what is the so we have lift from the wing lift from the tail right and C G acting at some other location the hinge point and C G are in the straight line here in both the equilibriums right in the vertical axis. So, but in that case there is an offset where the C G as well as the aerodynamic forces act. Right. So, we need to see where should I locate the C G so that the system is automatically stable right. See here you are not you are not controlling the system here. When, once you disturb from its equilibrium there is no need for any external control it will automatically come back towards its equilibrium once you once the disturb once you once it will automatically come back towards its equilibrium once the perturbation is done once once the external force is removed from it so here the system will come back towards its equilibrium automatically once there is no external force acting on it right okay. 
So another example that you may consider is take a bowl. So these examples you might have studied already. So it, you take a ball placed at the at this location, at the bottom location of this ball. It's a concave ball, right? Now you displace this to a particular location here, either this side or this side. It will start moving towards the initial equilibrium. So in this case, the resultant forces and moments are zero. So once you displace and leave it, it will start oscillating about this equi particular equilibrium, right? So it will start oscillating about it and finally attains this equilibrium, which we can say it's a stable equilibrium. Right? So if you take a con convex ball, if you place a ball here, what happens is as soon as you pet up this, it will either go this side or this side, right? It will not come back towards its equilibrium. So here. In the first case, we are not controlling any, we are not uh, imparting any external forces here. It is automatically coming back towards its equilibrium. So similarly, the UAV should have the initial, uh, the tendency to come back towards its equilibrium. So then we can say it is a stable UAV. Right? So even while varying the CG, what we witnessed is the stability of the system is changing. Right? So let us see how the stability changes as the CG varies. So again, in this pendulum case, mass, right? In this particular equilibrium location where it is minus pi by two, right? So at this equilibrium point, we say this is a stable equilibrium, right? If there is a friction and a friction that helps this pendulum to come back towards its initial equilibrium. So in this particular case. We considered it as a stable equilibrium. Why? Because it is attaining its yeah actual equilibrium. But how? What is helping? Why not in the other case? Right? Yes. Okay. Mg. Even gravity is there in the other side as well. there is a component of this mg right mg sin theta and mg cos theta so this mg sin theta is what driving it towards its equilibrium right but this force about this particular point hinge point is creating a moment right this is into l mg sin theta into l is a moment that is created about this hinge point right that means there is a moment that is restoring its equilibrium that moment is known as restoring moment right not to have this equilibrium stable i mean if you need to say if a system have to be stable then there should be a restoring moment so we know aircraft Aircraft have six degrees of freedom here, right? It can translate as well as rotate along the three axes here of this body body frame. See? So it can translate along x, y, z and rotate along these three axes. So the rotation along the x body x axis is known as roll and pitch and yeah right you have roll pitch and yaw of the system okay so the pitching moment is about y axis now say let m be the moment here which is given as half rho v square s c m into c bar half rho v square s is the force dim dimensions of the force and c bar is the dimensions of the length so force into length is a moment it's a moment arm, you can say C bar, and Cm is a non-dimensional pitching moment coefficient. Right. Cm is a non-dimensional pitching moment coefficient. So Cm is twice the pitching moment divided by rho v square s into C bar. Okay. 
Now this is the moment that we are talking about. Even in the pendulum, there is a moment, right? Because of the force. So this is the moment because of the aerodynamics. So there, in the pendulum case, we have that moment due to gravity. Here we have a moment. This CM is a moment that is due to the aerodynamics here. So consider the CM variation with angle of attack. Since we mentioned it's a aerodynamic moment, so these aerodynamic forces and moments depends upon the angle of attack. Right? Let us consider this variation of the CM with angle of attack. So let us say this is for the entire aircraft or the UAV, entire UAV. So say in the first case you have a UAV, which is so. Let us say this is your UAV. Yeah. Right. Say. This is your UAV B. Right. So, what is this particular point? So, for this UAV B, you have CM variation. This blue line represents the C moment, pitching moment coefficient variation with angle of attack. For the UAV A, this pink line represents the pitching moment variation with angle of attack. So, what is this particular condition? This is an increasing alpha. Okay. So, this is your positive and this is your negative. What is positive pitching moment? So we discussed right, right hand thumb rule, stretch your thumb along the positive axis, right, positive axis and the corresponding curl of, I mean the curl of your fingers will give you the corresponding positive moment. So for a, so this CM is about, pitching moment is about Y axis, so stretch your thumb along the positive Y axis of this UAV and the pitch up is considered as positive and pitch down is considered as negative, right. Now what is this alpha, what is this point? So you can see at this particular alpha, you say the moment CM is 0. That means there is no pitching moment for this particular angle of attack, right? Do you accept this? So which means the moments are is 0 or a pitching moment is 0. CM is 0 means of course M is 0. That means it is a equilibrium point. If there is imbalance in the force that creates a moment, but the when the four resultant forces are equal, there is no moment here. So about this point, there is no moment, right? Okay. We can consider this as equilibrium. So this is your equilibrium. Now, let us say there is a sudden increase in the gust or the wind, which has increased the angle of attack. Okay. So this particular point alpha E equilibrium is perturbed by alpha alpha prime. The new angle of attack is perturbed by an angle of attack, perturbed by wind and the resultant angle of attack at that instant is alpha prime. So this alpha prime if I consider the UAV A, what happens because of this change? There is a pitching moment, it is a positive pitching moment that means the aircraft will have a no sub, right? So, so this is your positive y axis. Say this is your positive y, this is your positive x, and this is your positive z. So, stretch your thumb along the positive y, and the curl of your fingers will give you the corresponding positive rotation here. So, this pitch up, pitch up rotate motion is considered. Pitching up is considered as positive. Pitching down is considered as negative, right? So, what is so, with the increase in the angle of attack, there is a increase in the moment. Initially, at this particular angle of attack, where the resultant forces and moments are zero, right? You have zero moment, definitely, because that is the definition of equilibrium here. So, as the angle of attack increases, there is a change in the moment, and the change is in the resultant moment is positive, which means there is a pitch up moment, right? So initially say this is your angle of attack, this marker represents the angle of attack, right? So this is, sorry, V infinity and this is your angle of attack, the angle between them. So because of a small change, so this is the trim condition, let us assume, because of, this is your alpha E. Because of a small change, there is an increase in the angle of attack, small disturbance, external disturbance. 
So this angle of attack, increased angle of attack for a aircraft with that uh, pitching moment curve, let us say that is a UAV A, right. So this curve represents the pitching moment variation with angle of attack for UAV A. So for such UAV what happens, so this increase in angle of attack is increasing the pitching moment that is nose up moment, it further increases. So this further increase in, due to this nose up it further increases the angle of attack right. So that means let us say this is your alpha double prime, now the increase in angle of attack due to pitch up is alpha double prime. So for this UAV you have CM prime, CM double prime okay. That means there is a further increase in the pitching moment which further creates a nose up and further increases the angle of attack. So alpha double prime or triple prime will result in a CM triple prime. This is alpha triple prime. Okay. That means you are moving away from this particular equilibrium point. See here this is your equilibrium point you are moving away from it. Now in the other case say for the same UAV, UAV A if there is a disturbance that has reduced the angle of attack say. So initially this is your angle of attack say at equilibrium now this disturbance has reduced the effective angle of attack here. So this reduction in angle of attack for this particular UAV with this pink curve right. So will result in a so say this is your alpha alpha prime in the subscript right. So this results in a CM prime in the subscript okay. Now which means your your pitching moment is negative here right there is a negative pitching moment which is a nose down that means this will further decrease the angle of attack if you the aircraft will do a nose down automatically and which eventually re result in a reduction in angle of attack further. So alpha double prime so this will again right decrease the pitching moment or gives a negative pitching moment okay. So that negative pitching moment further will reduce the angle of attack that means it will go to alpha triple prime in the subscript. So this will further create a pitch down moment. So in either case if you follow a UAV with this pink curve you will end up moving away from the equilibrium once disturbed from it similar to that of a pendulum case where you have an equilibrium but it is at minus pi by 2, pi by 2 sorry right. If, if the CG is above the pivot point then the equilibrium is not stable, the system is not stable about that particular equilibrium right. So on the other hand if you look at this blue curve, so look at this blue curve that represents the variation of pitching moment with angle of attack for a UAV B. Say. So this alpha prime when, when there is an increase in the angle of attack there is a CM prime in the subscript that is a negative pitching moment right. So let us say there is a disturbance that has increased this is my equilibrium alpha right. So there is a disturbance that has increased this alpha but with the U, UAV with this particular blue curve will this change in the alpha will induce a nose down moment here CM is negative. So this nose down moment will decrease the angle of attack right that means you will start move on, moving towards this equilibrium point it will start decreasing the angle of attack right. So similarly if we if the angle of attack is decreased say this is your trim angle of attack or the equilibrium angle of attack right. If the angle of attack is decreased due to the disturbance what happens? So this reduced angle of attack will induce a nose up moment. From this curve you can see this reduced angle of attack will induce a positive moment which is nose up that means 
the aircraft will pitch up and go back towards its that means pitching up means it is increasing the angle of attack that means you are moving from here to here right moving towards your equilibrium point so what do we infer from this discussion that means for a, a uav to be statically stable right so this cm versus alpha has to be negative the slope has to be negative here the change in cm dcm with d alpha is negative whereas the dcm by d alpha in this case is positive so for unstable aircraft this change is positive for a stable aircraft the change in pitching moment with alpha is negative right so dcm by d alpha is equals to is should be less than 0 or negative and by the way what is this moment about this moment we are talking is about the cg but due to aerodynamic forces right and so we are starting with static stability so we discussed that there will be two phases of the stability static and dynamic right initially we are arriving at the mathematical conditions for static stability if the uav has to be statically stable the variation is in pitching moment with angle of attack has to be negative right the slope of the cm alpha should be less than zero okay so this is a necessary necessary condition but is it the sufficient condition let us say you have the cm variation with alpha the blue one negative let me draw a parallel curve for this right with a negative slope but passing through horizon here okay this is your cm versus alpha so this is uav c right this is the third uav okay so still even in this case with the change in angle of attack say this is your equilibrium here that means you are trimming your aircraft at alpha is equals to 0 0 angle of attack so at this equilibrium about this equilibrium when there is a change in angle of attack increase in the angle of attack there is a nose down moment that will take you back towards your equilibrium and vice versa but what is the trim for this uav it is at zero angle of attack because you cannot trim at positive angle of attack you will get negative moment so let us ex what do you call let us have a curve which is offset to this So this, these three are parallel. Okay. So this is your UAV T. So in this case, where is the trim? Is at negative angle of attack. This is your negative alpha, right? Alpha negative in this direction. So the trim is negative here. Alpha is negative. That means, but we witness CL is equal to CL alpha, CL not plus CL alpha into alpha when you have negative angle of attack you are actually reducing the lift cl that means you you will not be able to sustain the weight right at this particular angle of attack so it's a inefficient flight if you have it right the whole idea is to generate lift at minimum velocity and the minimum conditions power requirement conditions or the minimum what do you call it, minimum fuel consumption right so Although you have CM alpha curve, uh, CM alpha negative for even for this UAV D, but you cannot say you cannot trim this at a positive angle of attack. So, the CM naught, what is CM naught here? Here it is 0, here it is positive. What is CM naught? CM at which alpha is equals to 0, right? So, here it is positive. This is for blue curve, this is your CM naught. CM naught. So, for yellow curve, this is your CM naught. 
is 0 and for this brown curve it is your CM naught which is negative. This is greater than 0, this is equal to 0. Okay. So, for this to trim a positive angle of attack I need to create an offset here. Right. To create that offset for a flat plate this is how it will be. We will witness for flat plate what is going to be the CM. Right. So, in order to trim at positive angle of attack you need to have. So, this is your trim at positive angle of attack. Trim is an equilibrium. Right. So, in order to trim at positive angle of attack you need to have positive CM naught. So, when there is this is your negative CM naught this is your positive CM naught this positive CM naught will help you to trim at positive angle of attack. So, CM naught has to be greater than 0 CM alpha should be less than 0 or it should be positive for sufficient. So, necessary and the sufficient condition for statically stable, stable UAV. Okay. 